first when it comes to being deceived. That's the least. These beings are going to be convincing your soul. And let me tell you, any religion that tells you to go around killing people, um, that is so far uh, removed from anything that followers of Jesus teach. You, you just don't do that. Now, self-defense is one thing, but to go around killing people because they won't convert to your brand of religion, that's, that's, that's satanic. In, in, in a nutshell, that's just satanic. So um, we all have free will, and we're allowed to make the choices. And you don't have a right to tell someone they judge and jury and executioner. Only the creator can do that, and he's going to, which his, the book says he is. But I re- researched all these religions, and what I saw was that Christianity um, was, a, was actually the main perpetrator a serpent worship brought down into the present day. They won't acknowledge this. They will call me a liar. That that they're they don't they never worship the serpent. But they're the reason that we have serpent worship in America. It's the Christians that have done it, and they don't believe that. But you know, every year they put up a, a Christmas tree, which is in which represents the tree in the garden, and they, the garland around it represents the snake, the serpent. So they're, that's serpent worship, okay? They're putting that up in their house. Easter, the eggs are called the wicked serpent eggs. They're actually serpent eggs, okay? And they do that. See, <laughs> Halloween, the fall festival. Fall festival is a druidic holiday called the Fall Harvest Festival. That's what it's called. People died. That's what they did. And so they do worship the serpent. They do. They hold him up every year as though he's, um, you know. And where that came from was Aaron, uh, or Moses, when he, he had to hold up the serpent on the, 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 the staff, and they would, they would, if they were bitten by those snakes, they would be made well. That's where it started, with the Christians. They came away from that, and they continued that was the, the those people that continued to bring it on down. And, and you can see it's just infected every aspect of, uh, I mean, there's already Halloween stuff out at the, at the stores, okay? And there's those uh, so-called Jesus people, and they're purchasing all this stuff, you know? So you can't, you know, you, you can't pick and choose your history, and you can't deny where you came from. That's Serpent worship is, is mainly brought into this country by the Christians, the so-called Christians. So the sooner that these people understand that they are, they are the ones that are in, uh, in doing this, you can't tell them from anyone who supposedly is a heathen in the world because they all do the same thing. The sooner they might find the truth and they might get away from the, the practices that actually bring disgrace to the name of Jesus Christ, the serpent betrayed Jesus, why would you want to have anything to do with him? He's our enemy. Well, he's my enemy for sure. So that that kind of stuff, uh, Scott, when I do all this research and I bring out those things, you know, a lot of people get quite um, uh, upset. And there are people that, that can get very defensive. But, but I didn't get that way when people showed me that the Jehovah's Witnesses were wrong and showed me where they lied. And, what, and they proliferated false doctrines. I didn't get mad. I was rejoicing that I was being shown the truth. I, it hurt, and I was sick, but I didn't get mad because I don't follow men. I don't follow an organization. I follow Jesus. So if I find out that men and organizations are lying to the public or their, their you know, parishioners, I'm going to expose them, and that's my job exposing the works of darkness, okay? That's what we do. And so don't be mad at me. Don't hate the messenger. I'm just telling you that if it has to do with any um, religion or establishment created of religion on the earth, that it is, in fact, made of Lucifer. I mean, everybody that listens to me knows that I was baptized Catholic, went to the RCIA classes, and I stayed with that for a long time. 
but but when I start to listen, because you know we where I come from, hardly anybody speaks English, so it's done in Spanish, which is actually not too far off the Latin. But when I started to listen and and look into what they were saying, I actually found that they were delivering up the Eucharist to Lucifer. Yeah, that's right, Lucifer. Every year there's a holy day that's practiced by Catholicism, and the song that is sung actually actually proclaims Lucifer as the father of Jesus Christ. Okay? I just, I just listened to it when the Pope did it this last year. So, you know, we... <laughs> We have to get real about, and I've done a lot of stuff on the Catholic Church, and once again, I used to be Catholic, and I very much loved the Catholic Church. When I was practicing Catholicism, I loved the Church, I loved the people, the priest was one of my best friends, I just loved him so much, he was from Ireland, he was so funny, you know, and all the nuns were Irish, it was just, they were just great people, but, but I have to separate my love for the people, and, and I have to look at the, the, the truth, and the truth is, that it's a Babylonian church, it's a Babylonian establishment, and all of the Protestant churches are the, are the daughters of, of the, this uh, mother church. And they all teach and preach lies. So Jesus said you cannot get good fruit from a, a bad tree. Well, if Jesus said those words, then I kind of have to really go with him. I have to believe him. So... I would just admonish anyone who is hooked up on a, a religious institution, just remember that it's not, it's not the religion. You, you don't have any loyalties to religion or humans, priests, pastors. You need to have your, your allegiance should be with Jesus Christ. That's why, well, as a Jehovah's Witness, we didn't put our hand over our heart and say, I pledge allegiance to the flag and to the United States of America. Jehovah's Witnesses find that blasphemous. You pledge allegiance to Jesus Christ and to the heavenly kingdom, to the kingdom of God, not the United States. And that's why all the Jehovah's Witness kids like myself would be standing in the hallway when they were every morning reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. So, you know, these are just some things for you to maybe consider and think about. You know, go pray to to Jesus and, and say, look, she, you know, she says this, and I have a lot of information on any religion out there. I mean, I I have researched every religion. You just have no idea the extent of reading and research I have done to find out how these things came to be. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm not trying to offend you. You are Catholic or, or whatever you are. You, you, you need to know that Jesus is where your allegiance needs to be, not to a building, a religion, or man because they're all fallible. And we know that, that the Catholic Church, unfortunately, is like, you know, the Babylonian system. And many people who are Catholic are livid with this Pope. I mean, Anne Barnhart's at the top of the list, and she speaks out loudly against this Pope. But she actually believes that you have to be part of the Mother Church to be saved, and that's not what the Bible says at all. The Bible says that you have to believe in Jesus, and you have to be born again, through Jesus to be saved, not through a church. So I don't know, but I hope that helps some people. I know a lot of people have had, um, you know, they, they're involved in some type of religion. And when it says not to forsake the, the gathering of the brethren, those aren't your brothers and sisters, honey. Those people don't have any, Look, if they are worshiping a false religion and they were doing... They're not your brothers and sisters. When it says the brethren, that means people who are like-minded, who believe in Jesus and put him first. And if you, if you know that you will miss that, that you really want that kind of company, what I would say is that you are welcome to, you know, there are, there's a lot of you that call me, and, and, and it never ends that we'll be talking about the Bible, and I'll answer questions for you and show you scriptures, and the next time somebody will call me and say, guess what I found? And they'll, you know, share with me what they found in the biblical text, kind of an exchange. And that is, that is the gathering of the brethren. You edify one another, uh, you know, talking about the Word of God and, and exchanging information. So that's exactly what we should be doing instead of going into these buildings. And by the way, I don't know if any, if, if I said this on the air, I think I did, 
that um, the Baptist Church now, the um, his last name is Moore. I don't remember his first name, Robert or something Moore. He actually has now started tithing um, a portion of all of your hard-earned money. All of you who go to Baptist churches, um, uh, you, they they are giving a portion of your money, and they are building mosques across the United States of America with your money. So you are blaspheming Jesus Christ by giving money to build a satanic church, a satanic temple. You are responsible for that. Do you understand? You're going to be standing in front of Jesus and be held accountable for that. So, And you know what he said when he was approached? Well, well shouldn't we start building you know, temples and stuff for witches and, and, and Satanists, because after all, you know, it's freedom of religion. And do you know what he said? He said, and I quote, that's not a bad idea. This is what this man of the head of the Baptist churches, this is what he said. That's not a bad idea. And you know what? I can't believe that anyone would go to a Baptist church after that. So they're going to start building churches or temples for witches. And you're going to continue to be loyal to an institution that's promoting satanic belief systems and even giving your money in support of these systems. So, you know, Scott, when I heard that, I was amazed. Just absolutely amazed. I uh, I was taking notes, and I, I wanted to come back to address what you had mentioned about Calvinism. Some Not everybody knows what it is. And it can be a tricky subject with Bible churches in Phoenix, Arizona, because they usually tend to, to mean that it's a Calvinist church. And what they're really saying is that it's predestination, okay, that we do not have free choice. And uh, the opposition of that, of course, is fallen angels who then chose to, you know, blaspheme God they had a choice. They were angelic. They saw the wonders and the, and the incredible, beautiful environment around God and made these decisions. So people make choices whether to receive blessings or curses. This is what the book of Deuteronomy is all about. I kind of discussed that with the curse of the bastard. But uh, the premise of what they're trying to bring in this doctrine is that God chooses who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. And there isn't anything to completely support that. What, what we see uh, is the same thing with predestination, bringing a piece of this and a pre- piece of that, when there is nothing that straight out says that. Now, uh, again, if, if you're a Calvinist, and that, you know, if that seems to offend you that I don't believe in that, well, then so be it. The point of it is, is that we do have a free choice. Evil is trying to deceive us, but those who are obedient, those who test the Spirit, those who go to the Word of God and are good Bereans do not fall under that class of, of to be deceived. Now, many are going to be deceived. There's going to be a great falling away. And in that falling away and that great deception, in fact, the conversation today was about that, is the very fact of this false religion called Christianity. And I make that statement because of all the years that I've been doing deliverance now and trying to bring this into the churches, they've beat me, they've stabbed me, they've set me on fire, they've called me a heretic. And the point of it is, is that in the Great Commission of Jesus Christ, Matthew 28, 16 on through, we're told to continue those things. And Julie, you and I were talking about just because at the point of Paul, the deliverance is not mentioned about casting demons out anymore, therefore it's done, it's over with, is absolutely insane. Nowhere does it say to stop. Nowhere does it say that it's not done. In fact, because of the, the fact of Matthew 28, reminding you that this is when Jesus returned back to the apostles. Okay, He had the holes in his hand and his feet and the, and the hole in his side. And he told them to continue those things until his return. So there you go. Over trumps any of that ridiculous doctrine that is a doctrine of demons that have become a, a, a source that man uses to come against the word of God. And because of that, then the, these who are under witchcraft, those who are under mind control, those who are under the influences, then to buy, buy into that and follow like lemmings to the cliff. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. 
and so I rest my case. And so in order to be delivered, in order for me to cast demons out of you, you have to come with a repenting heart. Just as Jesus said, we must come as little children. And when that takes place, then as I get you to confess and renounce and repent and, 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 uh, and, and put things right, then we take all the legal rights away from the demons. I now take that box of puppies and I now close the lid and, and put uh, tape on it. Okay, They can't come at you anymore because they no longer have a, quote, legal right. And that then keeps them from coming at you. So those curses are broke off of you. You're set free. You now can operate as God intended you. And what a wonderful thing. You know, I mentioned that Jesus paid for all past, present, and future sins. And they'll say, well, when he was on the cross, he said it is finished, so therefore we don't have to do that anymore. That is not what took place. He paid for our sins, and when he said it was finished, he beat the devil. And he, he descended down, and he took back the keys of death and hell. But let me again point it out. If, if you have something taken from you, and, or you may have forfeited something under the delusion that you, know, you, were, you were hoodwinked, okay, and you go to court and you get that property back, you get the house back, you get the car back, whatever the situation is, you still have to go get it. You still have to go unlock the door and go in. You still now, if, if whoever took residence has got their stuff in there, their dirty underwear, you got to go in and get rid of it. you got to throw it out. you got to get all that stuff out of you. Get, out, get it out of the house. Clean it up. You know, get, get the spick and span out and start shining things up. And that's, your, that's, your, that's you. Okay? So we clean up those things that the devil has tricked us into being wrong. Um, Julie, you and I were also talking about this woman today. Now, if some of you are new and not familiar, I'm in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I'm up in the Panhandle. And I'm wedged up here between Spokane and Missoula, and just below Canada. It's a wonderful, beautiful place. Unfortunately, it is a very demonic place. It is a place under the occult it's uh, just to the west of me here is one of the ten highest rated areas for Luciferianism. A uh, place down the road here has been known for its witchcraft. We have Priest Lake, which was established by the Jesuits. Uh, we had the skinheads here at one time, but the federal government threw them out. But uh, what we have is a high Masonic area. We have, uh, as Julie and I have been pointing out with the cars that I've seen with their identification stickers, that uh, that apparently this is a gathering place for reptilians. Well, with this, uh, I've mentioned that that the and, and by the way, people who come to visit me for you know to be ministered to have mentioned what's with all the big people. Okay, women on an average here start at five ten. It's not uncommon to see a six foot woman, and and uh, there can be a handful in the store that are six two, six three. And six five. I, there was one woman one time. I couldn't believe how big she was. She wasn't um, uh, disproportioned. She was absolutely perfect from top to bottom. But she was like six and a half foot tall. Okay, that's very common here. So what in the world is going on? Well, there's obviously something. It has to do with the very fact of what I mentioned with this Nephilim, you know, uh, Luciferian issue with reptilians it has to be there's no other explanation for it because other people see it too so julie the frantic woman that called from the trunk of her car and then was eventually found dead over by the spokane airport so this is in my neck of the woods the de the description that she was giving over the cell phone as she was locked in the trunk to her husband and, and my heart goes out to them by the way the family because this is a terrible terrible situation that this guy uh, at six and a half or six five is the estimate that he was, and wearing a black hoodie. Now, it, why would you wear a black hoodie at six five? I mean, you're already going to stick out like a six. Uh, well, maybe not here in Coeur d'Alene, but the point of it is, is that if you're trying to to blend in, that's not what you're going to do. So he abducts this woman, shoves her. I believe was in her own trunk of her car, and she must have had the, her cell phone either on her or whatever the deal was. But she managed to call her husband, 
giving the alert that this was taking place, that she was being kidnapped. This was when in Helena, Montana, uh, she was, uh, you know, in that area down there, it's very uh, close to Idaho, and you can cross over back and forth a few times from one state to another. Well, again, uh, my point in this is that she's she makes the call to the husband. He alerts the authority, and it and and you know from that point in Montana to uh, Spokane, Washington is a good four or five six hours drive. So they had all this time to zone in on the signal of her phone, and the authorities dragged their feet, didn't do anything, and she was eval- eventually found shot and killed in that trunk where the car was abandoned over by the Spokane airport. So um, there's something wrong here. There's something going on. Whatever's going on, I've mentioned before about a man that I interviewed uh, several years ago who wrote the book Smooth Criminals. Now, with Julie and I, and I'll have her expound on a little bit what she thinks, that there are people out there who are released from prison They're under the programs from the federal government, whether the CIA, the U.S. Marshal's Office, the the FBI, and they're given a ticket of freedom as long as they do the dirty work of these agencies. And many of them are psychopaths. Many of them are are just absolutely deranged and demon-possessed. And while they're out, they do these horrible crimes. And so what the agencies do is they then do damage control and they try and cover up, they try and keep uh, people from knowing that these people are out there doing these horrible crimes. And is that the fact of what's going on here? I don't know, but something's wrong. Because with technology today, with 911, the cell phones, uh, the, the triangulation, believe me, they can lock right onto that phone and know exactly where that person is in, in the flick of an eye. And the fact that this, over that period of time from that part of Montana to Washington, so, so they literally had to cross the panhandle of, of Idaho and did nothing while this was taking place. And unfortunately, then she was found dead. Uh, the, the man had then shot her. Apparently, it was a 9 millimeter, and, uh, and then abandoned the car. Now, that takes place. Um, I know when I was in Arizona... And uh, there was one woman that there was kind of the same, similar incident. The guy didn't kill her, though. He left her because if you leave someone in the trunk in Arizona, and it doesn't matter even if it's in the spring or, or even in the fall, that, you know, 90 degrees, 95 degrees, or 100 degrees is, is, a, is a death to anyone in a trunk. And it doesn't take very long at all. And this one particular woman that was abandoned in Mesa, Arizona, and I happen to know where exactly it was, somehow she was able to knock out the the, the taillight, and she took her bra off, knowing that if a bra was suspended from a car, that it was going to get some attention, and sure enough, it did, and she was rescued. That was some quick thinking. Now, the other thing is, is that most of the trunks today that if you're accidentally locked in or, or under that situation of duress, there's usually some kind of latch. Now, she may be, you know, not being able to see very well and not being mechanically inclined or aware of that. She probably just didn't know. And, of course, if it was an older car, then that wouldn't be in there. So there's going to be a lot more coming out. Um, again, my heart goes out to the family because this is a terrible tragedy. But the thing of it is, is we have a six foot five killer on the loose. And so whatever the circumstances are, I am concerned. I'm concerned for the welfare of other women. Obviously, she was targeted for a reason, whatever that is. So, Julie, you've been kind of on top of this. Uh, What is your thought? Well, I read 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 it to start with this morning, and I felt really bad for that woman because the daughter was then lamenting, She's going to get married in a few months, and, you know, that's an important thing for a daughter to have her mother, you know, at her at her wedding, and I, I actually, um, I, I feel very bad for her, and I extend my sympathies as well. My mom died when I was three, and I didn't have that either, so I do, I do uh, feel very bad for the family, but, you know, when I read this, this, the statistics of, of this kind of thing, and then the other thing 
thought was that it took forever. I mean, how how is it that you can have that situation and nine hours later they still haven't found her? I and she was utilizing her cell phone. Um, the guy had stopped at two different um, petrol stations and and you know put petrol in the car. So where I mean. You know, they can, like you said, they can zone in in a second when you have your cell phone with you. They can find you within a split second. And they can actually, um, they they say they could drop a bomb within inches of where you're standing, if not right on top of you, within three inches. Um, how is it that it took them nine hours to even decide to check where, you know, where her cell phone was? That, you know, to me, that screams something else is going on here, and I know they're covering for whatever happened. And I actually also am, there's a lot of reptilian, hybrid reptilian activity in your area. All the mountains, and I need people to understand this, the Sierra Nevadas and all the way across the top of the United States, all these mountain ranges are completely filled with reptilians. You need to understand this is where they live. They are living in these mountains. They have been living in these mountains. You have grays in the mountains. You have the most hideous-looking creatures that have been created in the mountains. Listen, not a good place to be. Not a good place to be. And every single one of your um, pictures, the photos that you send me, all of them, are amazing how much they scream uh, reptilian city up there. So I know that this is what's going on, Scott. They have got, um, I believe, this is someone who they are covering for, and it could be a hybrid. What was he doing in the middle of nowhere at a rest stop with no car? How come he didn't have a vehicle? Because it was hers as the one he used. So why was he sitting at a rest stop in the middle of nowhere without a car? You know, I don't know. It, 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 it sure, there's more questions right now than answers, if you ask me. I mean, former law enforcement officer, I'm sure this has uh, all kinds of red flags being raised for you. Well, uh, again, um, you know, the NSA listens to everything we do. We have absolutely no privacy. So their argument that they wouldn't have the authority to do such things is absolutely ridiculous because they can any time that there is an emergency, that's part of the 911 uh, apparatus in your phone. Now you can go in and and disconnect that, but in reality, that's a that's a lie. They can still triangulate your signal. We need to remember that on cell phones that there are basic three channels that take place, and I've taught about this before. One has <clears throat> excuse me. One has to do just with the audio itself, that digital signal. Uh, one is one is referred to as telemetry. That's your billing, uh, the information about you. Uh, you know, is everything up to date? And in that is the coordination, triangulation of your location, because the cell site, as you drive and travel along, uh, depending on your service, then is determined uh, what cell site is best to turn on for your phone. They don't just turn on all the sites for your phone. That's ridiculous. That doesn't work because there's millions of phones out there. And the other channel is for what we call um, when, when, when they're calling you, okay? It's addressing your call. And that's specifically what it does is then it locates you, sends out the call boy, they call it, so your phone rings. But they have to know where you're at so they know what cell uh, site to to uh, to energize to do that, so they can you know immediately triangulate or even have in a moment know that she's not even in the area that she should be. Now there's a lot of mountains, you know I've been that way uh, quite a few times. Um, Highway 15 runs into 90, which goes east and west. That's how they ended up in Spokane. And by the way, Julie, you mentioned Rit- Ritzville. Uh, probably nobody really knows where that's at. Uh, I had to learn that one myself. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. But that's another hour or so west of uh, Spokane. So this guy's driving all over the place with this woman in the back. 
Now, the amazing thing is, is that she did have her phone. That was a blessing. That's why business should have been taken care of immediately. Because unfortunately, most and, and it kind of shows the ignorance of the attacker, um, you would think that would be one of the first things that they would try and do is make sure this person doesn't have a phone. So here she had, you know, the ability to call out, and, and yet it ended the way that it did. So are they covering something up? Uh, there, there has to be. And will we know the whole story? Probably not. You know, how unfortunate that that is. Um, but, you know, of course, we want closure for the family, but we also want to make sure that this beast, this animal, this murderer, this killer, um, it, you know, when they kill once, and, and by the way, just like, you know, you're, you'll talk to your husband and he'll say, most likely this is not the first time. This is one of the things that we, we understand being in that business, that when someone commits a crime, chances are there's a whole slew of them that they've already done. They just got caught on this one. Now, this one, you know, got revealed. So he's probably done it before and, and as sure as the sun's going to rise tomorrow, he will do it again. Now, this makes him a very dangerous person for anybody that stumbles across them. Maybe he may not have the intent on that individual, like, you know, like at the rest stop and so forth. But many people can be put in that position where they feel threatened and they'll use deadly force to, to uh, flee the situation. Um, I mentioned before, too, that when there is a federal arrest, otherwise the, there's a federal, federal warrant, out for somebody, that a officer is bound to make sure that if this person flees, that he's given the right to shoot that individual. And the reason is that by the time a federal warrant is issued, then they have already done things that show that they are dangerous to society. And they must therefore be stopped at all costs to make sure that the community is not at risk by them fleeing. And an officer that could have taken a shot and does not can actually be held accountable for anyone who dies later uh, in, in civil courts, anyways. So, because you need to remember that a civil situation is much different than those things of a criminal. Because you only need to be a percentage wrong in civil courts, where in, in, a, in a situation such as criminal, it either is or it isn't. Okay? So that's the difference, and of course, you know, we know that with um, O.J. Simpson, okay? And of course, now we know, too, as we've talked about, that there's something fishy there, um, and, and we can talk about that later, but anyways. All right, so, so again, we just, we're, we're so sorry that that happened, and we're very cautious now that uh, in this area, it doesn't mean that he's here, but uh, obviously there's, he's not done yet. So please, if you're in Washington, you're in Montana, um, that also in includes, uh, you know, the surrounding states, be very cautious. A six-foot-five individual should be obvious, but again, because we got such giants here in Coeur d'Alene, he's going to fit right in. So anyways, Julie, down to about 15 minutes. What else you got here? Uh, also, I wanted to mention about the um, satanic holidays, the Luciferian holidays that are, are upcoming. Um, we they, we just passed the day of, uh, I think it was Wednesday, was the um, dismemberment of a female from age, uh, infant to age 21 um, that would have been done. And then uh, the, we have uh, another one coming in two weeks called the Hands of Glory. Um, uh, there will also be another sacrifice and dismemberment. And what they do is at Christmas time, they give body parts to each other, exchange body parts with each other. The Luciferians is what they do with Christmas gifts. So um, between now and then, it's going to be a lot of blood is going to be spilled in this nation and across the world, um, sacrificing children. And um, if you're new to the show, you probably don't know that I uh, uh, have exposed children and child trafficking um, by the elite, by the senators, by the president of the United States, by all of these people that are involved, the Vatican at the highest level. 
And this is from children who have been abducted, who have um, uh, grown up in a trafficked, uh, um, it, you know, world where they were sodomized and raped their whole life. And um, so it, you may not know, but, but there was a person that I, I, you know, cared very much about who was murdered a few weeks ago because of his revealing what they are doing, the elites are doing, and he witnessed many, many murders of children that were raped and murdered um, as these so-called elites were murdering them. And these were senators, um, state police, uh, CIA, DARPA, NATO members, um, FBI, military, uh, all different kinds of ranks, Pentagon employees, Pentagon uh, high, they call it uh, the brass, you know, the uh, military brass. Um, all of all of these people, by the thousands, are involved in this type of behavior. Okay, so I I speak out about this stuff, and I want you to understand. Uh, I I this subject is very near and dear to me because I was abducted as a child, and I was taken to a a a uh, military base, and so I had I just have this subject on my heart because I was a lucky child that I was actually found. My father uh, took guns in hand and beat down doors and got me back, but uh, who knows, you know. But these children never see the light of day, and they're, they're shoveled through my lab, and, and my labs are where this stuff takes place, and there's like 41 of them in the United States. So um, the underground transportation system, you know, Dallas police officer can be in Dallas, go to Washington, D.C., or wherever they're having it, rape and kill a bunch of kids and go back to work on his lunch hour. I mean, this is ridiculous that this is the kind of stuff that goes on. But this is what's happening across the world. And, and I, I well, once again, don't mean to offend, but I'm telling you right now, this is from victims who this has been done to. The Vatican is the number one procurer and child trafficker on the earth. The Vatican, they're the number one. All the underground catacombs, they have sacrificial ritual chambers. Remember, um, the former Pope Benedict and this one were both convicted in a tribunal court, international court, of not only raping and murdering children and, and cutting the throats of infants at, at Luciferian uh, ceremonies, but also of having sex with dead corpses, babies, uh, ba uh, uh, little children. They were convicted in an international tribunal court of law. And the reason Benedict had to go step down is because the Spanish government said, if you don't step down, we're going to expose everything you've done. And, by the way, they told him, if you step on Spanish soil, you're going to prison, because they knew what he was doing. You see, there are places these popes can't go, because they've already been convicted. The evidence was there. This Argentinian uh, fake person in there, he, has, he was also convicted of these horrible crimes. Okay? Witnesses that saw Pope Benedict slice an infant's throat on the sacrificial altar to Lucifer and drink the blood and pass it around for everyone else to drink. See, this is the stuff that was witnessed by people who... Children who are made to watch these rituals, yes, that's what happens, and, uh, and participate when they're very little. So this problem of satanic worship and child trafficking and child sex rape and sodomy and murder, this is a huge, huge, this, in my uh, humble opinion, it is the number one problem facing the whole world. Because you know what? How you treat your children tells a lot about a nation. And when the whole world is engaged in murdering and sodomizing and raping the, the most helpless of all classes of society, if you can do that, you can do anything else. Everything else is nothing compared to that. So once you have a, a world uh, treating their, their, their vulnerable children and infants and being bred, they breed women take their babies for sacrifices to Lucifer. Do you understand once people start doing that, everything else in your country is going to go bye-bye because that's just the way it works. And I'm very passionate about this. 
I know you hear that in my voice, but being uh, a victim of uh, abduction myself and satanic ritual abuse, I do not tolerate people staying silent on this topic. It should be screened from the loudest rooftop. And the fact that no religious organizations do or talk about it makes me know even further that they are all belong to Lucifer because they do nothing to make this known and 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 to you know get the information out there and and force the government to put a stop to it. So thought that's where I leave it on the child trafficking and the sex and the rape. But you know what? That's coming in two more weeks. There's actually a couple of ceremonies prior to that. There's going to be the uh, demon rebels, which I told you are what they do leading up to. And by the way, um, that, that what they do is, is called lesser magic and then sex magic. And they just, they get together as covens and they have sex with anybody and everybody and everything, every animal, everything they can, and they create what's called magic. It's, the, it's, it's called forces. And if you read in Daniel, it talks about that the Antichrist doesn't worship the father, the, the God of his forefathers, but the God of forces. That's what it's talking about. They create forces by, by all of this breaking down of the Ten Commandments, breaking down of the laws of God. And it's just sex with everybody, every which way, animals, all that. This creates force. Okay? It creates an energy that is a very dark energy. Okay, and that's what they do leading up to this uh, night, uh, the Hands of Glory. So I just want people to be aware of this mass plague that is on this uh, in the world, and I I want that for you people to to speak out and pray about this, and I want you to go after the demonic realm, and I want you to speak against it in your prayers and speak against it, you know, in the public, and, and if people laugh at you and call you crazy because I get those letters, hey. They call me crazy, too. I'd much rather be called crazy by them than have Jesus Christ say to me, you know, you survived it. How come you didn't uh, uh, make it known? You were, you you know, you you actually didn't die. But you didn't bother to go out and tell people what you know? Well, why did you do that? I don't want to stand before him and be derelict of my duty. So, God, I, I just think that everybody should pray diligently as much as they can against this horrible stuff that's going on. I, uh, I, I know, the, and, and we've talked in depth, and we've made full shows dedicated to the children, to those events. You know, we've talked about the underground bases in New Mexico, children being held there just simply for food, for experiments, for these hybrid creatures, the, for the reptilians, for those they call greys. To think that anyone could ever do such a thing tells you how wicked they are. Again, I've mentioned when God refers to someone as being wicked, we're talking about the depths of Satan. Um, a, a child is, is extremely um, innocent. Now, a child can be a handful. A child can be uh, an absolute blessing. But when we look at how evil looks at children, they're absolutely disgusted with children because of the representation of good. You need to, to understand how they think. When, when it comes to demons, they hate you, but they hate your kids even more. And I've mentioned this before, but I want you to understand that the ultimate goal to get you into uh, a predicament of, of uh, curses because of your sin is ultimately to make sure that your children fall underneath that curse and that they are then brought to a point that they're not who God intended them to be and won't serve. I wanted to kind of finish out here. Um, in 1912, we're all familiar with the Titanic and how it went down. But there's a lot more information that has, and has been coming out on the Titanic. And what, what I have been researching and what I've been coming up with that there were several senior uh, individuals on there that were bankers, that were, in, in fact, three of the richest, classified richest men were on there, and that the Rothschilds uh, and the Rockefellers, who were very instrumental in the Federal Reserve, that these senior 
uh, bankers were in opposition to the forming of the Federal Reserve. And, and so there's information that the Titanic was intentionally sunk to eliminate, to kill, to destroy these men who were in opposition to the Federal Reserve. You know, this took place in Jackal Island around that time. This was slipped in during, the, during Christmas when there were those in Congress that were not there to vote because they were uh, away for the holiday. This was one of the Rothschild attempts to overtake America, and they succeeded. Rockefeller being the financier here in the United States, we know that he was uh, the, the main core behind the Twin Towers. You've seen the, the Time Life uh, magazine with him sitting there with his watch. I, I forget what year it was, 62, 63, somewhere around there, maybe even a little later, that uh, his watch said 9-11, the two pillars, the number 11, you know, I mean, Julie, Julie has talked about all that. You know, another th sad thing ab about the Titanic, you know, what a, uh, an incredible incident that took place with 1,500 people losing their lives. 700 did survive, but you can imagine, you know, their life and what they went through, those icy waters, I just can't even imagine it. But um, there was a very, very high number of those who lost their lives that were abandoned. They had a arduous task of, of taking a very large amount of corpses, dead bodies that they didn't know what to do with because they were not claimed. So many of the passengers that were down in the lower groups were basically drifters or people that didn't have any recognition or or even the word getting back to another country where they you know where their family was at didn't take place. So there was you know. Uh, uh, the the typical federal action uh, to you know get rid of these bodies in the form that they do, and when I I Florence Arizona, I went there one time. That's where the uh, uh, the, the state uh, pen is at, and in the back area between the buildings where the um, prisoners are kept, the cons, is this cemetery. And I drove up. You would not You would never see it from the road. You actually have to enter the premises to get back in there. And I remember getting out of my truck, and I was looking at all these graves. And the man that was escorting me, because if you're on the grounds, you're, you're under escort, I, I said, well, what is this? And he said, well, these are all the people that were forgotten, the ones who, who died while being incarcerated, that their families didn't want them, and or there was just nobody to claim them. And so here were all these graves that went, I don't I remember what the oldest one was, but it went back a long time because that had been there for some time. You know, and, and how sad to think that there wasn't anybody to, to claim these people. Now, many of them may have been so horribly, you know, violent, uh, the, you know, criminal to, uh, to the degree that nobody wanted anything to do with them, that I'm sure there's a lot of those cases. But, you know, a lot of times there are people who are incarcerated who are completely innocent of their crimes. With the advent of DNA checking, the verification, we're finding that a lot of people who supposedly had murdered, supposedly who had raped, supposedly had done whatever crime, turns out it was not them. That they maintained their innocence the whole time, uh, but yet uh, the, they were found guilty. And, you know, and then later release, sometimes 20, 30 years, which is amazing. And the fact of anyone being held in that type of an environment for that period of time, I don't see how anybody could ever become right again, and especially having, you know, a, an opposition against society for, for such things. So I, I'm bringing this point up that many of the children that Julie is talking about Many of them are going to be consumed by humans, hybrids, and reptilians. They're actually going to be eaten. Many of them are just going to be sacrificed and then thrown by the way, whether they're, they're burned, you know, incinerated, whatever they're going to do. And, and so is, is this what God had for us? Well, absolutely not. See, this is another, another 
um, point and, and why I believe that the so-called church today is not really of God. Because you see, the power of God, the dunamis, the ability to stand against the wiles of the enemy, has been given to us. We have that power with Christ who lives in us. A greater is he that's in us than it's in the world. And the very fact that these things take place, the very fact that these things even happen, shows us that someone's doing something wrong somewhere. And if these churches claim to be who they are, then why are these things happening? And so these poor children who were brought into incarceration in, in the, uh, uh, you know, the human trafficking uh, is an abomination. And I know that God weeps because us as man, us who are in this world, are the ones who are told to be the ones to step up and move forward and take care of business. Just as Adam was given charge of the garden, he allowed that slimy thing to come in and corrupt when he should have grabbed it by the throat and thrown it out. So it was his responsibility. He was the one held accountable, but because of that, we all fell. Now, in that, we have this today to a, to a point, and, and let, me, let me bring this to your attention. Again, as I mentioned, that we were given that responsibility to take care of business, So when we reject Jesus Christ and what he has called us to do, then technically what we have done is we have placed ourselves back underneath the law. The law was put there by Moses and the prophets. Those are the Ten Commandments to keep us out of sin. But when we're rebellious, we are in sin. When we reject Jesus Christ, we are accursed. So therefore, until you step up to the plate and knock one out of the park for Jesus then believe me, as the books are opened up, God's going to ask, why did you not do what I told you to do? I sent my son giving you those abilities and those powers to do these things, and you did not. The question was asked to me last night, what gives me the right to do what I do or the authority? Well, again, those things that have been told to the apostles were to cast out demons, heal the sick, set the captives free, restore sight to the blind, to make disciples of all men, preach the gospel. And in Matthew twenty-eight sixteen, as I mentioned before, the Great Commission were told to keep those things. So I, as a professing man that is a bondservant of Jesus Christ, I put my money where my mouth is, and I do those things that have been commanded to do. All right, we're out of time. Have, everyone have a good weekend. We don't need to leave on a bummer. <laughs> But remember, in prayer, we come into agreement with, uh, with our Lord Jesus. And when that takes place, then he is there to guide us in all truth. How can I say it any simpler than that? All right. Good night, Julie. plane had crashed into a residential.